the recent buff to Minamoto's relic makes him one of the most powerful cavalry commanders you have access to when you're first entering the season of conquest so today we're going to take a look at whether or not it's worth investing in Minamoto in 2023 what's going on guys cheers now this video is being recorded on March 17th and by the time you're watching this I'm probably on vacation so if some other content creator has made a video just like this right around the same time as this I do apologize I just figured this would be a good video to post while I'm gone and also probably the next two or three videos that you see will also be pre-recorded now as you guys know Minamoto is frequently known as money moto because you have to buy him with real world dollars okay and you have to be at least VIP 9 in order to even expertise this commander I think the total cost for Minamoto is around $200 if you buy every single VIP bundle and I think it's possible to get him to 5511 with about $30 so there's a pretty big range there in terms of cost but it's important to consider this when actually getting him because what if he doesn't actually age really well well that's what we're going to talk about here in this video so if you're a new player to rise of kingdoms we're going to go over his skills and his talents if you've been playing the game for years you could probably skip this section but his active skill without the expertise says he deals a direct damage to the target with a damage factor of 1400 and has a 50 percent chance to deal additional damage per second with a damage factor of 600 for two seconds so that's an additional 1200 damage factor that only occurs half the time so on average he deals about 2000 damage factor to a single target and in the early game this is super powerful okay because we're comparing him to commanders like Cao Cao who before you get to season of conquest his active skill just deals 1400 flat and obviously there's a debuff here but even comparing him to commanders like El Cid who you have access to at the same time El Cid is dealing about half of that damage which is crazy so you can see that Minamoto in the early game is definitely one of the best commanders in Rise of Kingdoms if we look at his second skill here it says increases cavalry march speed by 10 percent and attack by 20 percent the third skill gives you a 50 percent increase bonus damage to barbarians so this is something that's again useful in the early game but obviously useless for PvP and then the fourth skill is really interesting and I think this is where Minamoto still has a little bit of usability in the later game which we're going to talk about but this is normal attacks of troops led by this commander have a 10 percent chance to increase damage taken by the target by 30 percent for three seconds there's a five second cooldown 30 percent damage taken increase is a really powerful debuff not just for the early game but also for the late game if you look at things like Ark of Osiris for example where you really want to swarm down structures or even in kvk swarming structures you know flags forts and things like that has sort of been the meta at least for the past like year at this point making that target take 30 percent increased damage just random proccing is really really nice and you don't really see this debuff on pretty much any other commander I mean damage taken that's crazy but the expertise is even better here because what it does is it actually changes the active skill to go from 50 percent chance to 75 percent chance which means on average he'll be dealing about 2300 damage factor to a single target again that's just simplifying the math there but that's the same amount of single target damage as Nevsky has okay and Nevsky is one of the best cavalry commanders in the entire game and honestly one of just the best commanders in general now of course Nevsky is a far superior commander he does a lot more other things but the single target damage output on Minamoto just can't be ignored along with that debuff now if we take a look at talents this is how I currently have my Minamoto set up because in the season of conquest you're really never going to use him as a primary commander unless you're defeating barbarians or barbarian forts so in that way it just makes the most sense to go all in on the peacekeeping tree obviously I grabbed rejuvenate over here and I grabbed uh undying fury for the extra rage regeneration Minamoto does actually benefit from latent power he's one of the few commanders where I do think that this is probably a pretty good pickup because a lot of his extra damage comes from that a bonus damage over time on the expertise and on the active skill so you could grab latent power here if you want to but for pve content i think this is pretty straightforward now if you are going to use minamoto for pvp there's a couple different talent builds you can go with the first one is just going all in on the skill tree here grabbing feral nature and just having the fastest rage cycle that you possibly can with minamoto i'm not a huge fan of feral nature but it's definitely good for shorter fights if you're just running in hitting a target for a little bit and running away uh, i think feral nature does play a nice little 
will roll there I came up and grabbed emblazoned shield over disarm because I do think that reducing the skill damage you take by 12 percent is just better than debuffing the enemy targets attack there's some downsides to going to this side of the tree though because unfortunately you're gonna grab like charge which I don't think is very good and the health here for three percent is okay I'd rather have the nine percent damage to archers and if you wanted to do that you could maybe remove latent power and put that here it's really up to you I think that undying fury is pretty much non-negotiable though or you could do something like this where you actually do grab disarm and halberd over here and you have still the three points in the cavalry health you get everything in the skill tree and then you put your last point in the three percent March speed over here for peacekeeping and finally I think this might be the most well-rounded of the talent trees this one grabs just rejuvenate as well as tactical mastery and heraldic shield from the skill tree as well as latent power and of course you are skipping out on feral nature and on clarity so you are missing out on some extra skill damage from the secondary there as well as a slightly lower rage cycle but a majority of your rage is honestly going to come from rejuvenate and undying fury as well rallying cry is better than most people realize because it's 15 percent all damage you should be popping your first skill within that time frame anyway based on your rage regeneration and a lot of the times you're not sticking around for super long fights so when you leave a battle and then you enter a battle again this will re-trigger so again 10 seconds doesn't sound like that much but it's definitely better than you might think you also grab pretty much all the stats here in the cavalry tree you get emblazoned shield and disarm and you still get the extra three percent march speed over here now if you don't care about this march speed you can put that in the extra point of health here it's up to you or you could put it in equestrian excellence if you care about that so really it just comes down to personal preference now since we're talking about a commander that involves spending money to get let's talk about the pros of getting Minamoto okay the first of all the earlier you get Minamoto the more you're going to get value out of him right because you'll just have him for a longer period of time so if you get him in pre kvk for example you're going to get use for him all throughout kvk one and two and then you'll still have access to him in season of conquest and kvk three as well so you'll get a lot more time out of that if you're already in season of conquest quest the value of Minamoto goes down significantly because I mean you already have access to commanders like Nevsky like William like uh Joan of Arc Prime for example so at that point it's like you know if you're gonna spend the money on him it's probably better to do it in the early game so you can at least get those free PvP kills from him from players who are still using things like El Cid for example okay the other pro of getting Minamoto is that because he has so many PvE uses he never really is fully useless right for example if we look at a commander like let's say Ram for example okay the first time you get access to him you expertise him and then later down the line you get access to commanders like Boudica like Henry obviously you'll still be using YSG you have Artemisia later down the line you may just put Ramses on the bench and you probably won't really ever use him again unless you need like four or five different archer marches the same thing can be said for commanders like Saladin for example and I love Saladin right but if you're only running one or two cavalry marches in late game season of conquest you're not going to be using your Saladin you're going to be using commanders again like Nevsky like XY like Joan like William and so that in that investment in Saladin is pretty much useless after that after a certain point but the thing about Minamoto is that because he's so good at peacekeeping I mean 50 percent bonus damage here is really good with the peacekeeping tree you're still gonna probably have some use for him as far as PvE goes even in late game season of conquest whether it's killing barbarians whether it's rallying those late game barb forts that are pretty strong without high uh, kvk tech or whether it's doing just random events that come around in the game like Soroli crisis like arms training lohar there's a lot of events in the game where having really high single target damage pve commanders is still going to be relatively useful so minamoto in that way is never fully useless sometimes he may just be a third fourth fifth pick for pvp but he still holds at least a little bit of value in pve now the other pro that minamoto has along with the other season one and two commanders is that he actually gets access to a relic that not only has one star but you can upgrade it to two stars which you can see I've already done here and this is one of the most powerful relics in the game and I'm really happy to see that they did that for Minamoto because again he is a commander you have to spend money on so you would really like to see a really powerful relic come for this commander and they did they gave him 60 percent of stats guys if you look at his base kit just his regular skills he only has 20 percent attack and 10 percent march speed that's it so he really only has 20 percent of battle stats out of the box and here you're getting an additional 60 so now he has 50 percent cavalry attack 
30% cavalry defense and 10% cavalry march speed, which really brings back, it revitalizes him for this season of conquest. So we're going to talk about some of the commander pairs that you can use with him later in the video, but this is a huge pro. The fact that you can still sort of use him in season of conquest, even for your first season of conquest, before you even have access to Nevsky or Joan of Arc or commanders like that, you will still have access to your Minamoto and he will pack a massive punch to a single target and he'll definitely be one of the best choices that you have at that very early season of conquest point now the cons of minamoto are that he costs 200 dollars, so you do have to spend a lot of money just to expertise this commander the other con is that again he is sort of power crept out of the pvp meta once you do enter that season of conquest so most players are going to be using things like nevsky with joan of arc prime you also have commanders like zhang yu with william that you're competing with and even commanders like honda right who are just a really easy shoehorn secondary but beyond that you also have to look at commanders like Mehmed too right Mehmed is another season one commander that is pretty good in season of conquest and he's sort of a generic secondary who just deals aoe gives you a bunch of attack and health and skill damage and that's pretty much it and honestly that's the meta in season of conquest right now is just massive skill damage and stacking your stats okay and that's not even to talk about the fact that when you get to season of conquest you're going to be diversifying your commander lineup to include you know infantry commanders like guan yu with cpo or archer commanders like Boudica prime with ysg so it really becomes difficult to find a good spot for your minamoto once you enter that season of conquest and you've been in it for a while and you start to collect some of those really ultra premium late game commanders and so that 200 investment does definitely diminish quite a bit the other cons with minamoto is that he is pretty glass cannon right he he does have that 30 percent defense on the relic which is nice but depending on who he's paired with it's really easy to get good trades against him when you're swarming him down because he doesn't really have any anti-swarm uh, technology built into him for example also you can't really use him as a primary commander in season of conquest like i talked about before because the problem is that when players see that minamoto logo in the open field they assume that it's a player that doesn't have access to really good commanders so they assume that they in turn also don't have great equipment they don't have great armaments they probably don't have maxed uh, crystal technology and they'll just assume that this is basically free kills and nine times out of ten or probably ten times out of ten they're going to be right okay so basically minamoto in the open field is just a big target on your back saying hey i'm new to season of conquest please melt me okay and they will and they're going to get a bunch of kills on you and it's not going to be a good experience so with all that being said who should be expertising minamoto who should be getting him to five five one one well i would say if you are in pre kvk1 you just started rise of kingdoms okay if you're a low spender or a dolphin then you may want to consider getting a 5511 Minamoto. Okay. Because the thing about that is, yes, you're missing out on the expertise and this last skill, you know, it's, it's really good. They still take 10% more damage, which is solid. And I think you'll get a lot of value out of a 5511 Minamoto for quite a long time. And we're talking about $30 here. And over the course of your Rise of Kingdoms experience, I think he will provide you with $30 worth of value, even if you only look at it from a PVE perspective but again in pre kvk you will be able to use him for pvp in kvk one and even two so i think that that's a good place to stop if you're also in pre kvk or kvk one and you're a whale or maybe even a dolphin it may be worth investing in minamoto and just taking him all the way to expertise again the earlier you do this the more value you're going to get out of it because you can actually stomp those early game free to play players or players who just don't really know what they're doing in the early game even whales in the early game a lot of times if they don't watch content like this they'll be using random just terrible commander pairs in the early game and an expertise minamoto can definitely shred those even if it looks like an unfavorable matchup once you start to enter season two season three or season of conquest with minamoto then it really becomes a question of are you a whale or not and do you want to just play around with him if you are a whale then sure go ahead and expertise and play around with his uh, with his relic if you want to use him as like a fourth or fifth cavalry march or maybe even a third cavalry march because now his relic is pretty good and we're going to talk about those commander pairs in just a second that's something that you could do but once you're in season of conquest i think expertising minamoto 
I don't know. It's it's really expensive for a commander that doesn't have that much value left in the tank. All right, now let's talk about some commander pairs for Minamoto. Obviously, if you're in KVK one or two, you have access to Cao Cao. This is the best pairing. Obviously, you want to do Minamoto primary, Cao Cao secondary. Uh, it's just a ton of single target damage, and there's a little bit of debuffing on this. There's some rage regeneration a ton of cavalry attack here right it's it's a really good combination and this is also pretty much the best barbarian single target barbarian killing machine right obviously they both have 50 percent bonus damage to barbarians it's just it's a really good march in the early game once you have access to saladin if you want to do a more tanky build you could do a saladin primary with a minamoto secondary kind of hide that minamoto and really pack a punch from behind the tank that is saladin or you could flip them around if you wanted to and just deal even more damage with the skill tree on minamoto and have saladin sort of behind him to back him up it's up to you i think saladin primary is probably better if you don't have access to those commanders in the early game i would say the best commander pairing for epics is going to be by bars um he just deals a ton of five target aoe and a really powerful march speed reduction 50 percent for two seconds is really going to guarantee that you're sna you're snaring that target basically you're slowing them down you're trapping them and enabling your other armies to swarm them as well and you're basically just stacking cavalry attack right remember uh, minamoto has 20 percent cavalry attack by bars also has the same amount on an epic commander which is really good and again his active skill if you're hitting five targets is more damage than minamoto so he's actually a really good uh cavalry commander in the early game and the march speed for running away is actually pretty good if you find that the matchups are unfavorable plus you never want to use an epic commander as your primary commander even in the early game because most of the time players are going to target the epic commanders first they're very easy to spot in the open field because they're purple instead of orange so people just know okay they're using epics they're probably free to play or really weak so I'm just going to swarm them down whether that's true or not so you're basically hiding your buy bars behind an at least a legendary commander okay so that's great for the early game once you enter season of conquest you have a bunch of different options right uh and this is where Minamoto is no longer a primary commander he's always going to be a secondary commander unless you're doing PvE content and even then you probably want to use somebody like Nevsky as your primary a Nevsky primary with Minamoto secondary is probably the best thing that you can do for Minamoto in the season of conquest okay I think Nevsky has better pairs in this season of conquest but I don't think Minamoto does if that makes sense basically what this one army is going to do is massive single target damage and apply a bunch of different debuffs to that target as well so for example if you're swarming a target and Nevsky hits them with his active skill you're going to reduce their defense by up to 45 percent and you have that debuff on Minamoto that's going to increase the damage they take by 30 percent okay so you're really softening up a target and also both of these commanders are hitting that target like a truck Nevsky is also giving Minamoto a bunch of the stats that he desperately needs in the form of cavalry health you also have 20 percent cavalry defense and you have more cavalry health on the expertise here plus you're dealing 10 percent more damage to surrounded targets and taking less and you have 25 percent bonus skill damage with a chance of 35 percent on top of that when you cast your active skill so 60 percent bonus skill damage when Minamoto is hitting the target as a secondary absolutely massive nukes here okay and also Nevsky really benefits because remember Minamoto is bringing 50 percent cavalry attack and 30 percent cavalry defense that is absolutely huge for a commander that already has 20 percent attack and 20 percent defense okay so we're talking about 70 percent cavalry attack 50 percent cavalry defense 20 percent cavalry health and a 10 percent chance to gain 30 percent more health okay the raw stats on this commander pair is just through the roof and this is why I think this is one of the best ways to still use your Minamoto in Season of Conquest. So if you have an expertise Minamoto and you just enter Season of Conquest, your first expertise should probably be Nevsky. So you can just slap these two together and just have an absolute single target shredder. That's basically what this is. You're just nuking a single target from orbit with this pair. And it's really powerful. Some other commander pairs you can consider are commanders like Joan of Arc. This is going to be also a primary commander. This is a little bit more squishy than the Nevsky primary but it brings some aoe to the table and that's what joan of arc is great at she has the double aoe with 2000 damage factor and every other skill cycle she's gonna pop that twice which is just 
absolutely insane she has a lot of cavalry damage all damage she's also doing the rage restoration the damage bonus there's so much to love about Joan of Arc she is right up there with Nevsky as one of the best cavalry commanders in the game for a different reason and that is her massive AoE nukes now the other downside is that Joan of Arc is often targeted because if she's the primary typically that means that the army is relatively squishy and that will be the case for Minamoto however the fact that he now gives her 30 percent defense is pretty nice I mean that's more defense than Nevsky is giving her now of course Nevsky also gives health so there's that downside but at least she has a little bit of health here on the fourth skill as well so if you were doing something like Nevsky primary with William secondary then you could split up your Joan of Arc primary to do something like a Minamoto secondary and I think that that could be a, you know a pretty solid two cavalry army build if you don't have anything like uh Zhang Yu for example or you don't have Attila or some other way or some other pair to do I think Minamoto you could easily fit in there if you are doing a Nevsky primary with Joan secondary and you still want to use your Minamoto and you have your Saladin sitting on the bench then I think a Saladin Minamoto combo is fine uh, it's going to deal some nice single target damage it's going to be relatively tanky uh, and it's going to make whatever target you're hitting a little bit more squishy because of the debuff here on Minamoto so is this the best pairing no but I would say that it's still a decent pairing that you could do and I think probably one of the last pairings we can talk about is Zhang Yu primary with Minamoto secondary and this is the definition of glass cannon okay this the dps on this march is going to be through the roof but it's going to be really hard if you get swarmed down which you probably will because zhang yu is known for being very squishy so this is a high risk high reward march but the skill cycles on this on this commander pairing are going to be absolutely insane you have a very low rage requirement on zhang yu which means you're going to be popping off both commanders active skills absolutely like mad plus the defense reduction is really good here you have a ton of cavalry attack remember 50 percent on minamoto 40 percent on zhang yu 90 percent cavalry attack here okay so again this is the definition of glass cannon some march speed is nice cavalry damage bonus stacks is nice and skill damage bonus on the expertise is nice as well but just be really careful with this army this is an army that you want to send in deal some damage hit your skill cycle and run away and that's pretty much it so guys you can take this information and decide for yourself is it worth it for you to get Minamoto here in 2023 I think his brand new relic is really powerful and it's definitely something worth considering with that being said if you found this video useful or informative or entertaining drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm and tells YouTube that you want to see more content like this if you don't want to miss any of my rise of kingdoms videos you can subscribe to the channel and consider clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload and comment down below what you think about Minamoto did you invest in him do you regret investing in him I would love to hear from you down there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace